Lele here, and this is another of our IORG cast. And as usual, I'm very happy to, uh, to bring the topic of information overload from many different perspectives so that you that are listening can really understand uh, that is not a, just a fantasy. It's not only uh, you know, a little thing that people talk about, but it's a serious um, issue that we are facing in our everyday experience. And today we talk about if you are sitting comfortable, or that's actually the title for, for us, but what does it mean? And we will hear it from uh, Annie and Monica that are here with us. So welcome, Monica. Welcome, Annie. Uh, welcome to our iOrgcast. How are you? Thank you, Lele. Good. Thank you, Lele. Also good. Although it's a long day here. It's a long day. It's a long day. But, uh, you know, this is the purpose today. We, we, we are share, we have a, it's a very interesting topic. I'm sure that um, everybody's going to, you know, be interested. And actually, you can, if you're watching this, you can put any comment below and we will be able to reach out to you with many more answers. Uh, but before starting, I would like to know something more about uh, you, right? So my, I know that many know already Monica because she was part already of the, one of the IORCast, but what about you, Annie? Tell us something about you. Thank you. Yes, I am uh, based in Denver, Colorado in the United States. I am a managing partner and co-owner of Effective Edge Worldwide which is a learning and development firm that offers uh, solutions uh, for just this problem, information overwhelm, information overload. We've been doing it for more than 20 years and delighted to be part of the steering committee now for IORG uh, and your singular and very important focus on how can we reduce information overload and what are some strategies that we can employ at an individual basis and even in a team basis to help us to deal with the information that we're getting. Thank you. And uh, so like, that's the first time for you in a Yorka, so I'm happy, happy for that. Uh, mm -hmm. What about Monica? Tell us just, uh, you know, in a couple of sentences, a little bit about you. Okay. My company is called Mesmo Consultancy and the Mesmo stands for managing email smartly maximizes opportunity as in we basically spend far too much of our day dealing with email so i specialize in email best practice helping people save time by managing their email more effectively and efficiently and that may mean stepping outside the inbox and looking at an alternative email which is often very much more effective and i'm author of three or four books on how to manage email effectively um, so taking control of your inbox brilliant email managing in the email office they're all mine that's very so basically writing emails one of the important thing to do is to sit very comfortably right Yes, it is. Um, as we'll talk about, Anne and I will talk about, um, we just spend too much time in front of the, the desk, Annie and I will talk about. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So t tell us, so you, you two are uh, masters in information overload related issues, right? So particular email is one of the main, right? But Annie, I'm sure that you, there are many more that you can talk about. So tell us something more about, so we, we talk about stress, right? We talk mm -hmm. about um, and what is the impact into your, you know, our uh, kind of behavior, into our feelings, into our emotion, into our well-being related mm -hmm. to information overload? So I know that you have something uh, that you want to share with us. So you can share your screen, bring up any slide, and then uh, start telling, telling us about, introduce us the topic, you know, what has to be like, stress and information overload. Do, do, are they connected and why is it that? Yeah. Well, thank you, Lele. It is a big problem. So we don't need to tell your listeners that. Our listeners and viewers are well aware of the problem. But sometimes it's helpful to slow down and really uh, examine the impact of uh, what this is costing us in terms of interruptions, distractions, and lost time searching for things. 
and the impact that it has on us individually and also organizationally on our ability to get the most important things done. So when uh, we look at some of these statistics, and these statistics come from surveys that we do at Effective Edge as well as uh, a recent basic study, which uh, tells us that people are working longer hours, but spending less time on key objectives, and are feeling more stressed out. And I think one of the statistics that really pops out uh, at me from this uh, slide is that the average worker is spending about an hour a day looking for things. Now, if we just look at that individually, an hour a day is five hours a week. But if you're in a large company and you've got tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of knowledge workers, that statistic is literally mind blowing. Mm. And yeah, so it's a, it is a big problem for organizations. And I know that Monica, you were in a, a conference recently where you got to hear firsthand some of the impact. Yes. I was recently in Prague at a conference for EAs and I was just, my mind was blown away and I was taken aback because um, five or six of the speakers who were very high profile uh, executive assistants in, in big high profile companies confessed to having nervous breakdowns. One even said, she had had a heart attack, but the company still expected her to be up and working at the end of the week. And it just blew my mind away. I know that the young generation, millennials, work in a very different way to us. But I think we worked hard in our day. But to hear these people confessing to having um, nervous breakdowns, really and one of them actually sat and cried burst into tears when when we had um a panel discussion about how difficult life was um and that comes from not just personal problems but they all confess to working long hours and being expected to be on hand um what is it um seven hours a day 300 you know seven days a week 365 days a year 24 we, by 7 by 365 available. like to never be uh you know stopping and to never take some some free time to rest mm -hmm. but no. so, I, so as i understand from the slide so you did you mean that usually we work in 40 hours let's say a week tendentially we should 57 is already a lot so, and this is just average and that's actually the average should be 40, but okay, that's already an interesting point. But the, 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 the second point means that for the other 50%, people are basically um, not working, but getting um, drawn in the overload related activities, right? That means, you know, sorting emails, uh, miscommunication, um, not understanding what they should read, the misunderstanding of the uh, what, what what they have to you know, the, the, their interaction and so on. Am, am I right? Yeah. Yes. And it and it wasn't just um, maybe two three years ago. It would have been email, faxes, texts. Now, increasingly, um, small groups of workers have whatsapp between them they might have as we have as iorg trello it's this um almost tsunami of information coming at you through different channels and trying to work out which one do i really need to listen to and check up on and I think that was just took me back, it took my, blew me away. Mm -hmm. but, but basically, th this is also, um, so in the, the stress here is caused by not only longer hours you work, but also by the fact that um, you perhaps, even if you work a lot, you are not able to get all the things done that you are supposed to do, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Exactly. And this grieves not only an emotional trouble, but perhaps since you're sitting for a long hours, as, as we see on the slide, it's, it's physical trouble. So t- tell us more about it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you have, I mean, you, you have the, um, some points, and the worst thing I can do is, is read them. So let me add a little color to it. I mean, basically, I think these days we sit all day um you know we get up in the morning and some of us maybe exercise um but then one sits if one's lucky in some way you sit and you have some breakfast you sit and you travel to work whether that's car train bus whatever um you work all day you sit as you go home you sit and you have dinner most people are then exhausted and they're either sitting watching television or dealing with the tsunami of different channels spewing out information. So it's a lot of sitting. Um, and there's been a humongous rise in the amount of days lost through um, all these things. In a, uh, several of them relate to, for example, muscular skeletal diseases. Um, that, that I, it's hard to find data, but if you go back to t- 2013, and that's before things like uh, WhatsApp and um, Trello and things, 30 million days were lost in the UK through some sort of muscular skeletal disease, through, through basically um, staring at a computer or sitting. I can give you a couple of little personal examples I have a young friend um, I think he's in his late 30s and he sat so awkwardly um, at his employers looking at his iPad and dealing with emails he had a very bad back and they actually paid for him to go to a top osteopath um, to get his back sorted out They, they took responsibility I think that the other thing we don't think about, and, and this is a very personal thing, is eye strain, just looking, not, it's not just about sitting, it's also looking at a screen, um, dry eyes, sore eyes, one's eyes deteriorate to, to some extent. So it's, it's about the impact both of sitting what is it doing to our bodies because we're essentially as it shows in that picture um, almost crunched up our bodies weren't built to be that way Um, and it's effectively stressing not just our mind but the different parts of our body and that then has an impact on circulation which leads to um, heart disease the heart doesn't get enough oxygen enough blood Um, the worst is things like colon cancer we've seen sitting on planes varicose veins so information overload impacts us in in um, we'll come on to the brain in a minute, uh, and he's going to talk about that in a few minutes, but it impacts our body. And on the next slide, we'll, we'll talk um, a little bit about what we can do. Um, and yeah, so- but, but at this point, you know, uh, one, one, one point is, you know, we are hunter and gatherers still, like their body created for that, for running, going away, right? And I know, for example, I, I have a little smartwatch, right? And one thing the watch does is that every every hour I get a notification, please, you know, you have to stand up, right? So, um, and this to me is a bit funny. I mean, I, I to to have an additional technology that reminds us <laughs> that we're supposed to do something, uh, it, it's funny. Right. I, I, it should be just me to just stand up normally so to organize my day in the way that I can work for a while and then I can stand up and then I work a bit more and maybe then I go for a walk and then I still work and then I run a bit or something like this way. 
So it's our normal rhythm. And instead, it's not. I mean, if they really put this feature and work hours to provide a software for uh, millions of folks that they need to remember to stand up, there is something wrong about how we are dealing with that world, I would say. So how to fix it? It's fix it, the technology. Um, you, you said it, Leila, that firstly, there is some technology. You can put something in your calendar, but the crucial thing is to take a break. And I think we need to take more breaks than we do. Um, take a break, a minimum of an every hour or so. Uh, if you look at all the history of research, it shows that we actually are not very productive after about 20 minutes. Um, we're not very good at focusing. One of the interesting things is um, that all these distractions have actually reduced our ability to stay focused to not much more than a goldfish, which, which our ability to think strategically is um, about five seconds. But what can we do to improve that? Well, again, we have some things. Now take a break is not just about taking a break and walking with your body. It's importantly about giving your eyes a rest from the screen. So for example, I'm looking at the screen now, but effectively I should look away to give my eyes a chance to focus long distance rather than on the screen. Oh, it's okay. important to, to blink as well. Um, so often we sit focused on the screen and we forget the eye doesn't blink. That's very important. Um, it's also about staying hydrated is one of the most important things because, and it was brought home to me twice this week, but if you don't stay hydrated, the limbs get stressed and get taut. Um, your blood pressure can drop if you don't stay hydrated. So when you take a it's about taking different breaks, but ensuring that you are hydrated, that you are resting your eyes, I think are two of the very important things. And I also and think that this is not something that we, we, we realize. We realize it in a different way. You realize it in, I don't know, if you feel bad, if you have all those consequences you were in the, slide, the previous slide, but it's not that uh, at one point you feel very thirsty and you drink. It, not really like that. Sometimes you really are dehydrated and you didn't feel so much thirsty because you you didn't have time to listen to your feelings. You're absolutely correct. One of my great uh, hobbies is playing golf. And if you watch the golfers, um, oh. they are constantly drinking and snacking. And the snacking is about healthy food as well. I think sometimes we just reach for something or we stop at a fast food outlet. And so again, it, it's about eating regularly, which we forget to do when we are so busy trying to deal with all this information overload. It's about having a proper lunch break. I bet if most of our listeners tipped up their keyboard, they would be amazed at uh, what they would find in it. Um, and it's not just the food, it's the germs that come from that mm. as well. Um, so also going with that, taking a break, um, there's exercises, which I, we, we're not going to go into here, um, but on the, um, it's also about sitting comfortably the the original talk was called are you sitting comfortably because it's about making sure that your desk is well laid out now there's lots in the literature about the height of the vdu um, the, the, or the computer whatever and the chair um, but it's also about making sure that everything that you need and work with constantly is nearby so that you're not stretching right across the desk and giving and stretching in an unusual way that's going to irritate your body. Mm -hmm. um, so those I think are some of the physical things, some of the things we can do to help ourselves mm -hmm. physically overcome the impact of information 
overload. Um, so going back, we are first, we are overloaded with too many information to work, not so effectively. So we have to work more, like more hours. Working more hours, we are more stressed, being more stressed, we sit down for longer, we feel bad and we might die for it. <laughs> or yeah. we might really have uh, several significant problems, right? So just take a break and uh, get away from it. So that's what you're saying. But uh, could it be also, I don't know, going for holiday? Or does it doesn't help? Or how, how should we deal with our holidays in order to really make sure to be, to, you know? That's a great suggestion is take a, take a holiday. <laughs> so um, it's this illusion that people are working with that they can, if they stay more focused, uh, which means, you know, staying at the desk, dealing with things as they come in, working longer hours creates focus. It doesn't. It's just the opposite. So as Monica is saying, not only do we need to take a break during the day and take a break during the week, it really is in our best interest to take a vacation, take a holiday, take a longer break. Um, I personally think that this is one of the biggest issues that leaders face today is the idea that um, you know their short-term focus because they're dealing with short-term tactical things like email, 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 telephone call, telephone call, telephone call, meeting, 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 meeting. And that develops a habit of focusing short-term. But if we take a break and we take that vacation time, it allows all of that mental clutter to clear out so that we begin to think more strategically and longer term. Unfortunately, the statistics, as you can see on the screen, are not good. Uh, people are not taking vacation time, at least in the US. And Monica and, and Leila, you may know more about the statistics in, in Europe. But in the U.S., most Americans did not use all of their vacation time. I, I think that's absolutely correct, Annie. Um, I mean, it's very interesting. France and Germany have almost taken a, a sledgehammer to, cut what, to crack what is a simple nut in that France and Germany are legislating um, firstly, in terms of stopping managers sending emails out of normal working hours to their subordinates, because there is always that feeling, despite the fact it has the little notification that says, you don't have to answer this immediately. We all know um, people do. And also in um, Germany, Daimler-Benz um, wrote a small piece of software that when people were on holiday, not only did they switch on their out of office message, I hope not saying they were on holiday, but just not that they were in the office, um, but saying it, pushing back emails and saying your emails are being deleted. And if it's really important, resend it. And the only reason I say that it's a sledgehammer to crack a nut is that if more leaders and chief executives set a good example and mm -hmm. developed a better culture we wouldn't need legislation but certainly no, but France and Germany Lele you may know more about what's happening in the, your the, part third, of the, the third point is interesting like who take uh, less vacation are less likely to ever receive a raise or a bonus that means that it's totally the opposite of what somebody that doesn't take vacation would like to do, like work more because they want to get somewhere, right? Uh, I, I know that, I don't know, I'm in Slovakia, I showed my, the, the legislation in, in this country is that if a company, if you are an employee and you don't take all your holidays, the company has to pay a, uh, pay a fee, right? Really? So, so it's more expensive for a company to transfer the holiday to the next year so that well, every company tries to incentivate or uh, incentivize the, uh, the the taking holiday. So, for example, I have 
if I take all the holidays into the given year, I have I get three days on top of bonus. That means that I I, I lose these days. It's like the legislation says, you need to take know, twenty five days of uh, a, a year, right? And but if I take them all, I get three days more, so I can take twenty eight. That's fascinating. Uh, so so, that's you know, so people want to take all the holidays yeah. somehow. Well, I think it's interesting because companies are beginning to recognize that there is, uh, you know, a carryover of uh, paid leave that counts, you know, is on their books. And that is something that, you know, most larger companies don't want. But Monica made a point earlier, and I want to stress is that, uh, you know, this is a leadership issue and that managers uh, tend to not encourage vacation. They don't discourage it, but they don't encourage it. And so that's sending a message, if not by, you know, verbally, it's sending a message by modeling the behavior of, you know, let's just stay at work and keep working. And the longer we work, the harder we work, the more focused we're going to be and the more we're going to accomplish is an illusion. That's not the way it works. Human beings need a break, and when they take a break, their productivity and performance increases. And there are some statistics here on the slide that demonstrate that not only does their performance and productivity increase, but their physical well-being increases. And when we are in a you know, physical state of well-being, we tend to be more productive and perform better. It's a pretty you know, simple equation that. And that's, that's, that's true. Uh, but an another thing is a, it's a risk, right? So even if you take the holidays, right? Let's say, assume you take them all, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, what stops you to keep checking your emails while you're on holiday? Mm -hmm. So either if we yeah. don't have the super duper uh, application that Monica was talking about, so mm -hmm. uh, it's still up to us, right? Yeah. And the, and the fear could be what's waiting for you when you get back from vacation. So um, if I you know, take two or three weeks and I'm not doing email, what's going to be in my inbox when I come back from vacation? Uh, and that can lead to you know, people just choosing not to take vacation because the cost is too high. And yet, let's face it, you know, if you put an out of office and, and Monica's suggestion, even to the extent of saying on, on vacation, your email is being deleted or it's being forwarded to the appropriate party for action. Um, if people really need you, they will email you when you get back and uh, there'll be op opportunity for you to handle requests upon return. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So what you should do is just delete all the mails, right? And it's when, a thought. It's it's a bold thought, but it's a thought. <laughs> it works. At, at the end, you know, um, I, 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 or maybe I speak from a privileged position because I've been uh, working without emails for many years. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I just tendentially don't really care, right? So people just start to uh, understanding that they can use other tools to reach out to me, right? Uh, but at one point, really, I, I noticed the same thing. When I when the the mail is very urgent, if you don't reply to it, you don't care about it, uh, and people really want it from you, they are gonna come from some other source because they really need it. And instead, if sometimes they, yeah, just it drops the the whole issue disappears because maybe it wasn't enough important, or it was maybe just somebody that you know instead of searching himself that information or instead of uh, uh, you know organizing that encounter was just quickly sending it and dropping the mm -hmm. issue to somebody else right instead at one point maybe you get encounter ah, i wanted to talk to you i sent you an email three weeks ago but since you're here let's let's fix it right it happened many times and it yeah it's cool you still solve the issues right well, we can say, you know, a lot about uh, that could be a, a webcast all on its own is the quality of communication and email mm -hmm. is very poor in the first place. And so here in the US, we have a, a term that, you know, the shelf life, like if you had a jar of mayonnaise on the shelf, 
that jar of mayonnaise would go bad in a couple of weeks. And I think the shelf life of an email is about three weeks. If, oh, yeah. if that. It, after a couple of weeks, that email is going to smell bad. <laughs> it's not going to have any validity whatsoever. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, and what about the, the the this new trend of the going for digital detox, right, or going for holidays mm-hmm. without any device? Is it something you uh, would recommend to do? Is highly it- recommend, highly recommend. So we know that focus and attention are limited capacities. The human uh, mind can only function so long effectively and attention and focus are limited capacities so when we uh, don't take a break what is actually happening is we're draining uh, we're draining our energy and specifically draining our focus from that part of the brain the prefrontal cortex which is known as the executive Uh, functioning center of the human brain. So when the blood drains out of the prefrontal cortex, we don't have the decision-making ability that we had. We don't think as clearly. Um, Brains can get tired, just like human bodies can get tired. So if we don't take that longer-term break, if we, uh, you know, just keep working and trying to focus and trying to focus, then there is a real cost and it's called brain fog. And uh, I, I noticed this uh, when, when I don't give myself a break and what it occurs to me as is I don't make decisions as clearly, I don't articulate as clearly as I thought, um, I can't think of the words that I need, and certainly my decision-making processes are slowed, slowed down. But the other thing that happens is that if we just keep working like this and we keep trying to deal with all of this incoming information and we never take a break, um, we ramp our central nervous systems up into a state of fight, flight, or freeze. Those are the stress states. And when we're in a state of fight, flight, or freeze, we get adrenaline pumping and cortisol pumping. And that is also very, very detrimental to our bodies and our minds long term. So it's basically like our computers when we open too many applications uh, that you start seeing the cursor of the mouse that just starts spinning uh, and nothing works anymore, right? Not even one application. We will, you start typing and then the, the, the letters come after you know, 20 seconds. Mm-hmm and you cannot work anymore, right? So uh, brain fog is basically the same kind of thing, but we got a long break. We have too much, and we cannot process yeah. anything. So just like a computer, every once in a while, humans need a reboot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, and we need a defrag. We need a defrag and we need a, a reboot. And when we do that, it gives us the opportunity to connect, uh, first of all, to clear that, all of that fog out and then very importantly especially today with such complexity in our environment and complexity in our organizations it gives us the ability to reconnect with our creative and our strategic resources and one of the best examples i like to uh, talk about is this um, Uh, the author of the smash Broadway hit, Hamilton, Lin-Manuel Miranda, who said, and I'm quoting from his uh, tweet, that it was no accident that the best idea he ever had in his life happened on a vacation when he had a second to breathe. And when he took the time to take a vacation, he said, Hamilton, the idea for that uh, Broadway show, stepped in and it was like he just got this wonderful inspiration. So when we take a break, we are able to reconnect with that aspect of ourselves, which is creative and strategic and resourceful. I remember that once I, you know, I saw this um, 
picture of the brain waves, mm -hmm. right? So that the brain works in an alpha, beta, gamma waves and so on. And when we are just uh, reacting, right, doing everyday live work in emails, the brain works in alpha, right? So mm -hmm. it's the, very, the highest frequency of, of the waves. But in order to have creative thinking, we need to be on beta waves. And beta waves are actually what are activated in the brain when we are doing different activities, such as walking, having a shower, uh, pausing, um, relaxing, right? This is actually when the brain start working in a different kind of functionality. And that's where the neurons joins and the creativity comes in, the idea comes in. Yeah. But in order to do that, we cannot be firefighters. We need to, to step away. And, and that's actually a very important thing to learn. Right? We work better if we work less. It's an, it's an irony, but it's absolutely true. I think you've... Go ahead, Monica. No, no, I thought, you, I thought I'd lost connection. I mean, I, I think picking up on Annie's point, uh, you know, there's some classic examples. Adriana Huffington collapsed at some point and wrote her book as a result. She realized she had to... Uh, disconnect from time to time and I, I actually do feel very passionately um, it, it's very hard I, I feel like I'm the we have an expression in England the tailor's daughter um, you know the worst dressed person and um, but I care and feel passionately that we do need to take a break and take a top a proper holiday and you know we may not be um, Tony award-winning playwrights, um, but we're all creative, imaginative human beings. Um, but all too often, our creativity and our imagination is just buried under a pile of emails and WhatsApp and text messages and all of that. And so it really is so, so important to switch off from time to time, um, and especially on vacation. And we're none of us indispensable, and but from time to time we work in perhaps a crisis, and we may be the CEO and the person that has to uh, uh, connect. But one of the key things is to I always try and help people and coach them to say, try to connect at the end of the day, so you haven't actually ruined the whole day, if you must okay connect once in the morning but the evening is far far better and again and we've talked about this mm -hmm. it is by leading by example and the trouble is a lot of ceos board level executives don't switch off and therefore um you know their behavior influences that and the culture so my message really would be uh, it lead by example to the rest of your team and your staff switch off have another mobile device if not if you've only got one remember that within that mobile device you can switch off your work email feed but switch off from time to time and love yourself right that's also important so, absolutely uh, to not only think about, uh, you know, the, the, the fact that there are things to be done, but to think about that uh, the, the, even the, the best employee, the more that works 24 hours, seven days and seven, with a lot of responsibility, if this employee breaks, how may also the company perhaps break because there are a lot of troubles, right? So in order to really be very productive and think about the health of the company you should think about your health as well you are an asset and uh, so resilience is very important for mm. to, to keep right loving yourself and as we discussed mm -hmm. um, you know taking some time and to not be overloaded we would endorse that wouldn't we Annie we would it's uh, the idea that uh, information overload is gonna go away uh, is uh, fooling ourselves. We can't change necessarily, you know, that, but
but what we can change is our response and our approach to information overload. And I hope that we've given you some ideas today mm -hmm. on how to do that. Yeah. And also, it's interesting, it's not going away, right? So it's not that, okay, now it's a bad period, so I'm having a lot of emails, but maybe next week is going to be easy, right? It's never going to be that. It, I think now it's the right the moment where you should start to take care of yourself, not like in one week when it's going to end. Nothing is going to end. It's yeah. going to continue and it's going to increase because I think... Um, Monica, I think it's right with your, your all the long experience, right? The, the email and all the overload, is, it's increasing, it's not decreasing. It's increasing, but I think one of the things we can do, and it's not done often enough, is the people that we work with most closely is agree some mechanism by which they will contact you if it's really, really urgent so mm. that you don't have to look at all of your emails, all of your text messages, but maybe that mechanism is a very simple thing called a phone call, which mm. means you can switch off from all of the other things. If you want to stay connected socially, that's different. But I think staying connected work is, is just not good. We've seen, we hope. I hope Annie and I and Lele, um, between the three of us, we've shown that that's not good. You need just one mechanism by which the office can connect with you. Uh, I, I, I guess, I, you know, I used to have it with, I, I had a virtual PA, just to give you a quick example, and also from clients. And the, me the mechanism we had would be, if anything was really urgent, I always switched on my phone at one o'clock and my virtual PA knew it was on for an hour and she could ring or text me. And then I didn't have to check everything. And I had a good holiday. Oh yeah. What about you, Annie? Any final tip? Yeah, I agree is that in order to have a break, you need to set in place systems and processes and protocols not only for yourself, but with your team, so that, uh, for example, I'm getting ready to go on a three-week holiday, uh, and I'm leaving in three weeks' time, and I am working now to make sure that everything is in place so that when I go on holiday, I can really check out, that I won't be taking my computer with me, I won't be checking email, I can really give myself uh, a break, and I have to have some, you know, processes and systems in place and uh, let people know, communicate in advance uh, that I'm going, how long I'm going, and that I'll be uh, unavailable so it doesn't come to a surprise. But I think if, if we do that, and people do that anyway, uh, you know, before going on vacation, it's just that they forget to leave their computer behind. <laughs> Thank you a lot for sharing. Mm -hmm. I think it's a lot of uh, uh, very interesting thoughts that we are having after this conversation, how we can really learn to sit comfortably at the end. Right? Uh, so thank you a lot for, for being here and for telling us all of this. So you, that you're listening, um, start at least, you know, sitting straight like a mountain and enjoy the time while you're working but also enjoy the time when you can stand up and take a break and then <laughs> <laughs> and have fun with that right and enjoy i mean the experience of working uh, is much more pleasant eventually mm -hmm. if you are not stressed and you're not blurred in this brain fog because then you can really experience it and work much better. Right. Solutions you never saw before will immediately become apparent. And yeah. while you are in break, you are not overloading anybody with additional information. That is actually eventually better for the information overload, perhaps, right? I, I think that's, that's so important. And, uh, you know, if you go back and perhaps my final thought would be, if you look at most of that email mountain, that you you look at after it's mostly chitter chat and you mentioned annie as well 
and you, Lele, if it's really that important, somebody will come back to you. I, I always say to people, um, I have some tips and hints on how to pack the inbox. And then when you come back, well, there's two things. Um, set your day away, um, your out of office message for a day early to give you time to clear the desk and pack up. Mm -hmm. Set it for a day after you're back. And the first thing you should go and do is walk and talk and find out from your colleagues what's really been going on. And then you can say, I don't need most of those emails. I just need to look at these three. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's true. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you have a corporate social network, you can just pose a question and maybe people will reply to you there. Yeah. Very good. So thank you a lot for sharing. And uh, perhaps this can, you know, close our IR cast of today. Uh, I wish there would be more of this kind of topics. And I would like also to know if uh, there would be any questions. So I encourage everyone to ask more because uh, there is a lot to talk about this topic and it's uh, the most relevant topic of nowadays that is well-being and how we can you know, uh, feel better, not only work better, but also feel better. So uh, thank you a lot and see you at the next IORCast. <laughs>